All right. In that case, even though we don't have a room, why don't we go ahead and start off with the public comment period? Yes, um, my name is Adele Franks, and I, um, I'm on the steering committee of Climate Action Now. And we are, uh, as is Sharon Moulton, who usually comes to these meetings. Um, we are part of a statewide coalition called Mass Power Forward, which consists of about 150 groups, environmental groups, faith groups, businesses, uh, et cetera, uh, working towards a 100% renewable energy future for Massachusetts. And we are embarking on a new campaign, and I just wanted to give you all a heads up because we will be coming back to you with uh, at least one, if not more, proposals uh, in the near future. And the campaign is to uh, get our public officials committed to 100% renewable energy for Massachusetts. So it has many components, including a legislative component. We've already gotten Peter Kokot's uh, sign on, by the way. Uh, but it's also going to have a number of municipal components. And so we will be uh, coming back to you with uh, some ideas and wanting your ideas and hoping to work with you closely um, in the next couple of months to develop uh, not only new municipal support for all of our municipal leaders here, including you and the mayor and the city council, uh, but also some concrete ways that Northampton can move along the continuum. Of course, Northampton is on the leading edge of uh, Massachusetts communities in clean energy, but um, there's still further to go. So we would love to be working with you towards that end. So I just thought I would mention that now so you will not be surprised when we show up with a proposal sometime soon. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. Well, every other agenda item might need a decision. There's one agenda item that might or might not. Should we move on to that one? If we don't have a quorum? Okay. Um, uh, this kind of is on the same one. Uh, it just struck me, this, this is kind of just something that is my own personal piece um, uh, that I wanted to bring up with the commission to see if the commissioners want to move forward with, uh, along this line. Just, we currently now have a president-elect who's denied man-made climate change, um, and who has said that um, he intends to back out of every climate change initiative that the previous administration had been part of, including the Paris Climate Accords, and uh, the Clean Power Plan, et cetera. So um, given that, um, say, heads up on what we can expect at the federal level, um, and just kind of knowing human nature, if you're you know, representing people, and you're at you're at a meeting. You're 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 being asked to back something up. It's a lot easier for you to hold the line. In my mind, it's a lot easier for you to hold the line and to um, continue doing the good stuff you've been doing. If you know there's a lot of people back there that are going to want you to do that, you might be. You know, you might not. So anyhow, so the whole idea here is to basically say, just in, given the situation. Um, uh, uh, some communication to our senators, governor, representatives, the House, you know, state um, leaders and federal leaders saying, given the situation, you know, in Northampton, we really want you to hold the line on climate change. You know, do not back down. Um, do not compromise. Um, you know, we've, we've, you know, compliment them for what they've done and, um, uh, and say, um, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we appreciate all you've done, and we, 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 we've got your back. You know, you continue to do this, and um, um, this is what your constituents want. So that kind of a letter, that's, uh, um, I don't know exactly how much difference it makes, but I can just imagine that there's going to be, you know, political winds blowing in the opposite direction at the federal level um, at this point. And I think our representatives might be able to, might be appreciative of, uh, of having it, um, you know, letters from their constituents saying that they want to stick with this. And to take it one step further is to suggest that other communities do the same, so that um, you know our representatives really know that there's a groundswell of support that will back down on this. This is too important. So that's my proposal to put out there just for discussion. <coughs> so Chris said just last name some of you weren't here. I my response then, I think it's probably still now, is I, I'm all for that. I think it should be 
I'm not sure it means much unless it's more concrete and measurable. So, you know, I love the idea of Massachusetts saying, you know, we're the size of some small countries, we should, in essence, treat it as if we're a signatory to Paris Accords. And just it, whatever it is, something that's measurable, whether it's 80% by 2050 or that we're going to follow Paris Accords, but something that's a statement of what we're doing that the federal government should be doing. So, the same concept you had yep. just for. Yep. Yeah, yes, you're actually backing it up by, by drawing a very, a very clear description. Instead of just saying support climate change, you're trying to clearly say it with a, with a measurable, some kind. Okay. Okay. And this would come from. Well, I would like. I mean, mayor. that's just. I mean, I think I'm. You know, I'm staff. Um, the commission, because we, we have one city council here, um, uh, commission department heads and particularly city council uh, participants, I feel, have more insight on what is politically useful. So well, I think that it makes a lot of sense to um, kind of blanket all of those. So that, And in fact, the Bill and I have been approached by a couple of different folks, and that's something that I talked to Sharon about, but I can talk to you about it too, Adele, to sponsor resolutions that say essentially the kinds of things that you're talking about. Um, and I'm just starting to work on something like that. I think that we can count on the mayor to also issue some kind of statement um, for the city. And I think that you know covering those those separated powers, as it were, is a really good idea. Um, you know, if there's some way, I don't know if it's ever been done, but to have city staffers or individual committees and commissions sign on as those committees and commissions and staffers, I think, you know, whatever, it can pack up more of a punch, I think, if you have all of that. And we could send it out or send it to the, you know, as a unified kind of package. I think that kind of tactically that could be a good approach. And I think it would be useful to have a letter from this commission because these are, you know, these are the experts that have been assembled for the city, and to go with a resolution from the city council and a letter from the mayor, I think that would be great. So, uh, uh, towards that, would it make sense uh, if this commission put together a letter uh, uh, for the city council, um, or you know, basically a letter internally to? You know, basically recommenda a, a recommendation to mayor or city council um, like that. Would that be a, a first good first step? And then maybe join in and sign in, sign on to a, a city council or mayoral resolution of some kind? Well, I think the resolution is going to go forward right. anyway. Uh -huh. um, but for the for this commission to co-sponsor a resolution, that would be great. Yeah, I was thinking okay. of a separate letter that was just a letter from this commission, but you could do it that way. I'm looking for guidance. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which, what is the best way to go. Um, We've done a bunch of resolutions, for instance, with the Human Rights Commission, when mm -hmm. it's, you know, something, and then, so they're, you know, from both of those bodies. So okay. it could be done that way. Right. Then, I know we don't have a quorum here to vote on it yet, but <laughs> from, the com from the commission's point of view, do we let the city council take the lead on this? Alicia, what do you think, Sherry, mm -hmm. should? Or, um, well, I think someone needs to be approaching the mayor to, uh -huh. because of that separation of powers, I think that his voice needs to be heard in a particular way as well. So, so a year ago, when the mayor signed us up for Compact of Mayors, it, part of that was a pledge of 80% reduction of carbon by 2050. So I don't know what's going to be in your resolution, but we already sort of have that in the books from them, and if any of you guys were including that as part of your resolution, that might be a nice way to... Send a statement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that the mayor can do is approach the um, Mass Municipal Association. Mm -hmm. And counselors can do that as well, but think kind of um, strategically about what to encourage the Mass Municipal Association to do as well. to encourage other cities to sign on or to the percent or to the Paris Accords as you suggested. That's a really nice idea. But it sounds like your can has some ideas too and so I'm wondering if, you know, if you have 
thought about the concrete, in concrete ways about what you want to see <coughs> city government do? Um, <coughs> well, <coughs> number one, I'm anticipating that we would want um, sign-on from the mayor, probably the city council as well, and, this, I don't, and the commission, why not have all three sign on to a pledge uh, and, and support for our state to go 100% to renewable energy. Um, and then the, the second part of that would be more um, nitty gritties of how is Northampton going to get to 100% uh, renewable energy. And that's, that's a longer, way longer conversation. Uh, but in general, we feel like we need to put pressure on the governor to say, you know, okay, it's time for you to really keep your distance from uh, president-elect and follow through on uh, what we want in Massachusetts. So it's very much in keeping with what you're planning to do. Okay, so I, I feel at this point that I, I, need, I needed a uh, proposal from someone <laughs> for the commission to vote on. Um, uh, we have to wait to have a quorum anyway for We need to wait for a quorum to vote, for sure. Um, but I, I think we need someone to kind of uh, take this and, and give it a direction, um, a specific direction. I mean, it, it could be just, you know, asking me to talk to the mayor or something like that. David, I think you're about to say something. Well, I was just thinking, since we can't vote on anything right now without a quorum, um, Chris, you could reach out to the uh, <coughs> your cohorts in other communities mm -hmm. and see if there's any action, which I'm assuming there is, and just sort of see what they're doing, and at least begin to compile some sort of a, you know, some information on where the communities are headed that might give us some ideas. So when we do have a quorum, we could actually vote on something. I feel like I have to reiterate what I said last time. I mean, we're not voting without a quorum, clearly, but we are doing we are a yes. towards something that yeah. will be voted on, and that's just can't be doing that if we're not, if we don't have a quorum in place. Huh. We're violating okay. open meeting law by doing that. Well, are we? I mean, it's an open meeting. We just can't vote, but we're still having the discussion in open meeting. I know, this is what we said last time, right. but I, I think it's problematic that we're even having a discussion that we're having, is my understanding, and I may be, I may well be wrong, but that's yeah, my I, understanding. I, I think that's, I think that's, I mean, Wayne, you hold many meetings. I don't know, but where, whether it's legal or not in an open meeting, I think it's not a very efficient use of our time. No, it's not. Except to the last time. Right. I'm not right. sure we should meet anyway now. I, I can't seem to get to my, actually, I can't seem to get to my email. I was about to send an email out to the Energy Commissioners again and say, anybody coming? This yeah. is, um, well, you're already, well, they'd be here now. Yeah, you know, you're already at 20 after. All right. <laughs> um, in that case. When do we meet next? What's our? Well, one of, the, one of the reasons I wanted to, to make sure we got a quorum and, and was to meet was because of um, it's really looking like that we're, we're likely that we're going to have green community grant funds left over. And I want to be able to um, uh, uh, <clears throat> put in a proposal for VORER how to use those. Um, we're getting pricing in on putting in uh, upgrading our outdoor lights in many of our schools. Uh, and that pricing will include a certain amount in rebate. And we can't, I, you know, I can't say, I don't want to go to the DOER and say I'm gonna, I want to use that much money in rebate will then mean that we have more money left over. I, I want to be able to say that the city is going to um, cover the cost if we don't get the rebates. And we've done this many times with the DOER. Uh, so I want to be ready to do that as fast as possible. If we wait till next month, um, things sometimes go slow enough that maybe I'll be in time for that, but um, I would rather have that, I'd, I'd rather have the Energy Commission just basically say the, the, the mayor's approved the idea of using the revolving fund. Um, I'd like to have the Energy Commission say it. So, do we meet next week again, try this again? Um, should we try some time during working hours? Um, Thanksgiving Day is that. <laughs> Oh man, I can train. Yeah. Next, not next week. Okay. No, <laughs> Good point. Okay. Come on, guys. You don't think we're going to get quarrel on Thanksgiving Day? <laughs> I'm disappointed here. Wow. Um. 
Do you? No, let's stick. Let's let's just wait till the eighth because we're obviously not going to have a meeting on the twenty fourth. So the next week after that, I mean, then the, the next scheduled meeting on the eighth would be um, would just be two weeks after that. So. And if the mayor approves the funds, you don't need to come before. Us, well, the ordinate. Well, it, I think we do. Yeah, yeah it's it's um. Okay. Yeah. I think we went to a lot of trouble to make sure that the energy commission had that kind of yeah, yeah. Right. piece of it. Right. Yeah, and it certainly is what we've done um, historically. Um, okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, um, I, I'd say we adjourn. Okay. Done. All right. <laughs>